The Agile Manifesto, you've probably heard about this so many times if you're getting ready for the PMP, the CAPM, the PSM, the CSM, you've probably heard it a gazillion times. But what exactly is the Manifesto? Well, I've got a really cool cheat sheet that I've put together to help those of you getting ready for the exams so that you can very rapidly get a grasp of what Agile is and so that you can recall what exactly the Manifesto is about. So go on down to tinyurl.com forward slash Agile poster and as soon as we get done, you can get a copy of the Agile Manifesto poster that I put together. So let's jump straight into it. What exactly is Agile? Now, you might have heard incorrectly that Agile is a methodology. It's not. It's a mindset. It's how you think. It's how you process the world around you. So here, I have a note to remind you. Agile is a mindset. Agile is firstly a mindset of adaptability. It is the ability to rapidly respond to the unending change with nimbleness to succeed while in uncertain and chaotic environments. So that's what Agile is. It's first and foremost a mindset. Now, when you get into the manifesto, which was written by these brilliant 17 individuals who said, enough is enough. We've been using waterfall, but we need a better mousetrap. And actually, these folks individually had already started the Agile movement in their own respective ways. So this was not new. This wasn't the beginning of XP or the beginning of Scrum. Those had already existed, but we had all of these giants coming together and trying to put together a manifesto that they would all agree on, that would help guide the mindsets of people who wanted to be more nimble and more adaptable. So the Agile Manifesto values, as you can see up here, it says individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. Now, let me get this straight. This is not saying individuals and interactions instead of processes and tools work in software instead of documentation. Oh, we don't have to do documentation. No, that's not what it's saying. It actually reads through the work that these folks have done, they have come to value individuals and interactions over, not instead of, over processes and tools. It's like you as an earthling, you say, I as someone living on planet earth have come to value a drink of water over all the food in the world, or water over food. It's not that food isn't important, but you'd survive longer with water, right, than you would with just food. So over is a very important word that I want you to get straight, all right? So individuals, humans, stakeholders, team members, value them over the process and tools. Work in product over comprehensive documentation, because if you've got the comprehensive documentation, but you don't have a working product, working software, what good is it? And by the way, this word, software, I often replace it with the word product when I'm teaching it, so that we don't get into tunnel vision that, oh, Agile is just for software. No, it's not just for software. Any organization in any business can use Agile, because it's a way of thinking first and foremost. So value working product, working software over comprehensive documentation and value collaborating with your customer as opposed to striking a contract. And, you know, when we talk about contract negotiation, it's important that we don't just think money. This is any type of negotiation. So if you're working with your customer, collaborating, when the time to negotiate comes up, it's going to be a lot easier. And lastly, responding to change over following a plan. I like the Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they're punched in the mouth. Then what good is the plan? So you've got to value responding to change more. We're not saying plans are bad. We're just saying you've got to value the adaptability more than the plan. It just makes sense. Let's go to the principles. So the principles start in the third section of this cheat sheet. It just says, Agile Manifesto principles, one to four. So I broke them into bite-sized chunks. The very first one says, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Makes sense, right? Satisfy your customer. Customer obsession. That's what this is talking about. Welcome changing requirements even late in development. 
agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Again, this is a mindset. When your customer comes to you late in the day with a change, you have the ability to say, I'm on team customer. Let's see what this is about and make it happen. Not, oh, a change again. No, we don't want to be like that. So it's a mindset. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to show the time scale. Now, when people read this, they incorrectly think about increments. This is not talking about increments. This is talking about releases. So when you deliver a working piece of product, not the whole thing, but a working piece, we could be talking about release one, which would be a number of increments or release two. Because when people read this, I hear some folks saying, well, it says a couple of weeks to a couple of months, so that means a sprint can be up to eight weeks. No, <laughs> that's not what it's advising you because the world is going to pass you by in eight weeks. Don't do that. If you're working in an agile framework, such as Scrum or Kanban, you see that we have in Scrum the cadences, and we don't go overboard with the cadence, especially in Scrum. We don't go overboard with anything more than four weeks. That's what is recommended. So this is talking more about the releases, right? So deliver working software frequently. Could be a couple of weeks. Yes, at the end of the sprint, you could have software, but it's not giving you a leeway of eight weeks. Very important to see it that way. And it says with a preference, a shorter time scale, deliver it and there'll be no surprises. Okay, final one says, Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. And it is what it is. You've got the product owner who represents the business, product owners on the team. You're working with that individual daily. All right. The next one is Agile Manifesto Principles 5 to 8. Build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. So what is this saying? Simple and plain. Motivated team, build projects around that team, not a demotivated team, not a whiny team. You see, and to be quite honest, it's the environment that the team is in that makes the team what it is. If the team is in a whiny environment, it becomes that. So hopefully your organization is one of a PMA, positive mental attitude, no plum mentality, no plum disease. And plum just stands for poor little old me. No. Motivated individuals. That's what we're looking for. Motivated individuals. All right. Give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. The next one says the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face to face conversation. Makes sense. It's been proven over and over again by the great Professor Emeritus Albert Morabian and many more through experiments. Number seven, work in software is the primary measure of progress. We don't do percent completes in the world of Agile because we already have a very small time box and we know that we need to get done within a, a finite amount of time and that takes away the concern for status in and, and a whole lot of heavy scheduling. We don't do a whole lot of that stuff in Agile. Number eight, Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. A constant pace is not 80-hour weeks or 60-hour weeks. No, don't kill people. Let people work at a pace that they can sustain. That's what this is saying. All right. Let's go to the final four. Agile Manifesto Principles 9 to 12. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. It makes sense. What is agility? Agility is, first of all, keeping things as adaptable as possible, but it's also avoiding as much as possible any form of waste or excess. So think about it. When you've got a shoddy design, how does that help you? When you're not technically excellent, how does that help you? This is just common sense. It makes sense to do that because that makes you agile. It makes you cut out the waste to be lean and mean and to be able to pivot, to be able to move quick. You got all this baggage because you have poor technical abilities and poor design. How's that going to help you? That's all this is saying. All right, number 10, 
Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done, is essential. What this is saying is, it's essential to cut out the fat. It's essential to not do busy work. It's essential to maximize the amount of work that you didn't do. So you got all this work to give your customer this value, shrink the work down, and still give the customer that value. It's all about thinking. If you're thinking and looking out for that, looking out for options of doing less work to deliver as much, you will be in the right zone. All right, the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. It's been proven over and over again, even outside of Agile, that teams that are allowed to work their own way, that are allowed to self-organize, they come out with better solutions. It's been proven. All right. And I dare say teams that have diverse team members, it's been proven. They come out with more robust, resilient solutions. All right, let's take a look at the final one. It says, at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. This is talking about retrospecting, not just the retrospective, but the whole concept of retrospecting. And what that means is ever so often, you're gonna look back in the rearview mirror and say, what could be fixed? What could we do better? And I talk about doing this on a personal level. This is not just a team level. You gotta do it at the team level, but you don't just wait for every two weeks and then you retrospect. Continuously retrospect. Always look in the rearview mirror and look for opportunities in how you are carrying out the work. And there you have it, my friends. We have covered the Agile Manifesto using this pretty cool cheat sheet. If you want a copy of this cheat sheet, just go on down, like I said, to the link. I'm gonna share the link one more time. It's tinyurl.com forward slash Agile Poster. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and let them know there's a colorful cheat sheet that can help them grasp Agile pretty quick. Talk to you soon and bye for now.